Gentlemen, ladies, Caitlyn Jenner's real name is Bruce Jenner. Um, I mean, that, that's his dead name. I, I mean, her dead name, her dead name. Hold it. If anybody makes a move, the Twitter gets it. Hold it, man. He's not bluffing. Listen to him, man. He's just crazy enough to do it. Drop it. Or I swear I'll blow this Twitter's head all over this town. Oh, Lordy Lord, he's desperate. Do what he say. Do what he say. Oh, oh, help me. Help me. Help me. Somebody help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Shut up. Oh, baby, you are so talented. And they are so dumb. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. And uh, after about a week off of Twitter, Elon Musk has returned to find it in shambles. And he's not very happy about it. Speaking out about the recent ban wave, which banned uh, Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin. Uh, he's also speaking out about some very curious other bans um, even going so far as to directly ask somebody who won a lawsuit against Twitter about their ban as at least it would look. Now, Twitter stock over the past month has done really nothing. It's been down two bucks. I mean, with the buyout price of 54.20, this still seems like a value buy, but it still seems like a lot of people either think it's going to get done at a lower price or not done at all. The differential between $38.21 and 54.20 on represents the confidence that the deal will go through, at least at that price. But Elon returned to slam the Jordan Peterson Twitter suspension, saying it, quote, went far, way too far. Elon Musk, billionaire and potential future owner of Twitter, has said that the platform has gone way too far, or too far, sorry, in suspending Jordan Peterson's account. Outspoken author and psychologist Peterson was suspended from Twitter for violating the platform's rule for a tweet that dead named Elliot Page. Uh, she, they previously went by Ellen Page, um, a rule that Twitter itself doesn't even enforce as they allowed Bruce Jenner to trend worldwide yesterday along with the name Elliot Page to trend worldwide. So they don't even enforce the rules evenly. On, they don't enforce the rules on themselves. Of course, we know why they let Bruce Jenner uh, trend. It's because he's not of the right political moment, a movement. If you look at a lot of these leftists, it's BLM until they're a conservative. It's um, trans rights until they're Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn Jenner now. You know, it's, 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 it'd be funny if it weren't so sad. Now, Peterson has since said he'd rather die than delete the tweet that would get him reinserted into the, pl and stated to the platform. I'm sure that has nothing to do with him getting uh, basically pummeled over the last month, um, and leaving himself open to uh, a lot of dogpiling. And he just, you know, I I've got mad love for what he's done for men uh, seeking their way. Uh, but he is not built for, you know, the amount of backlash that he gets. He, he can't take it like he used to. Uh, the June 22nd tweet that got him temporarily suspended, we already know. Early on Tuesday, Musk, who is often outspoken on a number of issues, was dragged into the debate when he was asked for his opinion by a Twitter user. Yeah, quote, they're going way too far, squashing dissenting opinions, Musk replied after he was asked about the Peterson being banned from the Bird app. This came after Musk had posted a meme on, Independ on Independence Day which suggests that Twitter inserts information warnings contrary to what people are saying. In a mocked up tweet by Paul Revere, his famous quote, the British are coming, is followed by a Twitter notice saying, learn how British taxes are beneficial for society. Well, yeah. Musk was brought up a couple of times by those close to Jordan Peterson after news of his suspension leaked online. Both Peterson's daughter and conservative commentator Dave Rubin called on Musk as the potential buyer of Twitter to change the platform's rules when he takes over. Since sharing the original post, Rubin has now been suspended from Twitter as well. As with anything Musk tweets, his comment on Twitter and decision to suspend Peterson stirred up conversation across social media. Now, again, I don't agree with that rule, but Twitter is a private platform and they can have all the rules that they want. People are free to use Gab, Getter, or Truth Social. That said, what they can't do is arbitrarily enforce those rules. 
enforce it only on the wrong thinkers, which is exactly why Dave Rubin and Jordan, Jordan Peterson were suspended. But Twitter themselves in their manual, manually curated list allowed the dead name to trend. They also allowed, again, Caitlyn Jenner's quote unquote dead name to trend. I even have a screenshot. Here it was celebrities trending, Bruce Jenner. Um, and this after a hilarious BuzzFeed news article breaking the stories important to you. Elliot Page's dead name appeared as a trending topic on Twitter, violating the site's own hateful policy, po policy on hateful conduct. In a statement of BuzzFeed News, a Twitter spokesperson said it was a mistake and had since been removed. Well, how about this? Uh, just for Twitter, I have decided to transition. Now, I'm not going to change anything about my orientation, but I'm transitioning uh, and my new pronouns, uh, well, well, my pronouns will stay he, him, but my old name uh, was the Quivering and Quarter Pounder. So anybody that used that uh, on Twitter will be dead naming me and I will report you and I will ask people to report you for dead naming me. Uh, I was previously known as that. I have ascended to another level of enlightenment. I now go by JD. And uh, using the quivering or quarter pounder would be a violation of Twitter's policy on hateful conduct. On top of that, interesting a lot, en enough, Alex Bre Berenson, an author of Tell Your Children, uh, he talked about a lot about uh, COOF stuff, 350,000 followers, had been suspended. Here's the original article. Let's get the official statement of reinstatement out of the way first. Quote, the parties have come to a mutually acceptable resolution. I have been reinstated. Twitter has acknowledged that my tweets should not have led to my suspension at the time. So it would appear that this person actually litigated against Twitter and won. Last August, Twitter banned me after I got five strikes under its COOF misinformation policy, which meant I had supposedly made claims of fact that were demonstrably false or misleading and likely to impact public safety. Now we come to those tweets. Should have never led to my suspension. Oopsie. Hey, everybody makes mistakes and everyone makes, not everyone's mistakes lead to a worldwide series of defamatory articles like this one. Proof conspiracy theorist Alex Berenson banned from Twitter. All in that past, all in the past, a little bird and I are now best friends. I can't wait for the insider on NBC News and everyone else who drooled over my suspension in August 2021 and later to devote equal space to the fact that I am back and Twitter by Twitter's admission, it should never have banned me. Much more, actually, because this has never happened before. <clears throat> you know what it took for Twitter to admit? It shouldn't have done what it did? You do not. I can't tell you because the statement is all I can say about the settlement. Except I need to add one thing. The settlement does not end my investigation into the pressures that the government may have placed on Twitter to suspend my account. I will have more to say on the issue in the near future. I made promise to readers last month and I take my promises very seriously. Now, on top of that, <clears throat> Elon actually replied to this. Says, uh, can you say more about this? Pressures that the government may have placed on Twitter. So Elon is curious now, did the government kind of intersect or interject itself and ask for this man to be banned? You can see Glenn Greenwald writing much of it, if not most of the most controversial and consequential political censorship on their internet is the result of threats, coercion, and demands from con congressional Democrats, not from tech companies themselves. And you can see this article, Congress escalates pressure on tech giants to censor more, threatening the First Amendment. And I believe Elon replies to this later and says this is you know, somewhere along the thread and says, you know, this is frightening. In their zeal for control over online speech, House Democrats are getting closer and closer to con the constitutional line if they have not already crossed it. This was an article that Glenn wrote back in February of this year. It would appear that Elon is kind of back at it. Uh, Digging back into, uh, yeah, you can see Glenn Greenwald, he wrote troubling in response to Congress escalates pressure on tech giants. As I've documented before, the Supreme Court has ruled that the First Amendment's free speech guarantee is violated when the government officials pressure, coerce private actors to censor for them. 
This is exactly what Biden's White House is doing with Facebook. And they are. I mean, this is, you know, under the guide of for your safety. How many people, how many people uh, are out there that you remember getting banned who were saying things that now are accepted as fact, but back then were conspected as expect called conspiracy theories? How many people were suspended for questioning the efficacy of masks or uh, all these type of things where we now know more information? But that didn't stop Facebook and Twitter and YouTube from banning these people for life along the way, even when they didn't know any better. They had the party line and they pressured YouTube, Google, and Facebook to follow it. And that's exactly what they did. They fell in lockstep with what the government wanted. And uh, that's the most frightening part. I've talked about that before, just how scary the level of censorship is and how quickly... The government can get a narrative and enforce it. There are three main companies that control almost all of the online speech. And that means the government has to get five people in a room and they can control the entire narrative. And that is a frightening thing indeed. That's why if you haven't yet, please take a moment. If you made it to this part of the video, I'm asking as a favor to please subscribe to this channel. There's a red subscribe button down below the video. I know you might have to create an account, but I would greatly appreciate it. If you're watching on Rumble, Odyssey, or BitChute, please subscribe there as well. Um, this is why I embrace alt tech, because you never really know. And, uh, and we do know how quick and how swift our government can interject itself into the uh, public discourse and control the narrative by banning people or de-boosting content or a wide variety of weapons that places like Facebook and YouTube have to silence dissenting opinions. I appreciate all of your support. Everyone who's here as a subscriber and viewer, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you again real soon.